ओके डियर स्टूडेंट्स टुडे विल स्टार्ट न्यू चैप्टर दैट इज क्रॉप प्रोडक्शन एंड मैनेजमेंट एज वी ऑल नो ऑल द लिविंग ऑर्गेनिज्म रिक्वायर फूड फॉर एनर्जी सो वी ह्यूमंस ऑल्सो रिक्वायर फूड we humans get this food from two sources that is from plants and animals in this chapter basically we will be going through the concept that how humans are doing arrangement for that food means how humans are continuously dealing with the production of food that is continuously generating plants getting food from them continuously getting food from animals in this chapter we will be going through the science of continuous production of plants for food and the science of continuously rearing or giving food to animals to get food so okay before starting the chapter we ourselves know that human population is increasing a lot so we require a lot of food so for obviously that food we need to grow plants or to increase or to maintain a level of animals to continuously get the food to grow plants and get food from them or from animals it is a science or it is a set of practices or humans need to do a fixed set of activities to get food from them so first of all we will see or learn the meaning of crop what is a crop see if there is a large large area very large area open fields we have already seen in open fields you might have seen same type of plant is grown same type of plant so that is a crop what is a crop crop is a that material or that plants so what is a crop when same type of plants when same type of plants are grown in large area in large number is called as crop that is when a same type of plant is grown on a large large area on a large large number that is known as a crop we have seen many wheat fields so that field is having a crop of wheat in front of our school you might have seen many times weeds grown many times you have seen that udal has been grown so a same plant a same type of plant is grown in large large number and that is known as crop see my dear friends don't get confused between crop and agriculture what is agriculture agriculture is science or art or technique or you can say practice to grow a crop what is agriculture agriculture is the process of growing a crop okay and crop is the same type of plants grown in a field okay so in the in this chapter we will be going through how to grow crop okay and after a crop has been grown how to get maximum production or maximum output from that and after getting the output what next management things we need to do so that the food is along with us and to it goes to each and every human okay so this is the basic concept of our chapter so now we will see as of now as we all are in india first of all we must know how many types of crops are in india so first we will see crops or types of crop types of crops 
See my dear students, growing any crop in any season is not in our hand. Each and every crop requires a fixed set of condition, weather condition to grow. Okay, so India's agriculture is monsoon dependent. Every country's agriculture is monsoon dependent. So basically, there are two types of crops in India. One third type is also that. Don't worry, we will also be looking into that. First type of crop is Kharif crop. Another type is Rabi crop. And the third category is Zayat. This Zayat is not done by most of the farmers. Very lucky farmers are there who have good sources of irrigation. They do this Zayat. Okay. So, what are Kharif crops? These are the crops which will be grown or sown when monsoon begins. So why these are being grown when monsoon begins? Because these require more water. These are the crops which require more water and very easy more water is present in monsoon season. Rabi crops require less water than Kharif. These require less water. More important, these crops are grown in winter. As soon as Kharif crop has been taken out from the field, Rabi crops are being sown. Very important, require more water. That's why we are growing them in monsoon and these require less water. So we are growing them in winter because in winter there are no rains in our country. There are few, at few places there are rains, especially in the coastal areas. So we don't need to consider that. More important, they are sown at beginning. Beginning of monsoon. When monsoon begins, that time they are sown. These are sown at the beginning of winter. Very important. Beginning of monsoon means they are sown in the month of you can say June to July. Very important, my dear student. This crop doesn't mean that just for example, as of now I am in Rajasthan. It doesn't mean that monsoon at my place will be arriving at the same place at your place, okay? As you all are from Gujarat, so you will be receiving monsoon a bit earlier than me, okay? And it's not even compulsory that even at my place if I am getting rain, it doesn't mean that there is also rain 10 kilometers ahead or 10 kilometers in my circle. Rain depends and rain fluctuations are there. Somewhere it rains more and early. So if rains early, people will sow it in June. If the monsoon is late, people will sow it in July. Okay. And this rabi crop, this rabi crop is sown in the months of September to October. At few places it even goes to November. Okay. Basically, Kharif crop requires hot and dry climate whereas Ravi crop requires cold climate as it requires cold climate that's why we sow them in winter season okay very important after three to four months these get matured okay curry crop and we do harvesting of kharif in the month of around September and our rabi crops get matured after three months of their sowing then it gets harvested in the month of March or April as we have seen the fields in front of our school they are lush yellow fully yellow why 
according to the month of march and april the wheat that wheat crop is fully matured and it gets converted yellow into color you might have seen it means that our rabi crop it's our rabi crop which is what matured in the month of march and april and when any crop gets matured we need to harvest it okay very important example of kharif crop is moong bajra cotton and example of rabi crop is wheat most common example see my dear students when rabi crop is harvested that is march to april we need to wait for monsoon that means we need to wait till june to july means we are having a gap of at least 2 to 3 months 2 to 3 months see if i have harvested my rabi crop in march and i sow my kharif crop in july there is a gap of 3 months if i am a good farmer and i am having a bit facility for irrigation i will go for zaire what is zaire zaire is a crop which is grown in between the time period of rabi and kharif rabi and kharif means it is grown in the month of around april may and june okay very important this requires very less water it requires very hot and dry climate as we all know in the month of april may june it is summer so zaid requires summer season summer season is perfect for zaid all the farmers are not doing zaid most of the farmers are doing kharif and rabi okay zaid is sown in the month of april few farmers sow in the late march and it is harvested in the month of may okay so this is the basic types of crops and mostly in zaid there are watermelons you might have seen as of now in market mark watermelons are present these watermelons are the product of zaid okay watermelon musk melon and many vegetables are being grown in the zaid season so okay dear students now we will see these were the types of crops which are being sown in india now we will see what are the basic set of activities and practices we need to do to get a crop so these practices are known as agriculture practices okay dear students to get any crop we need to do few set of activities these activities are known as agriculture agricultural practices very important these all practices need to be done in sequence one by one one by one to get a better crop so what are these practices first of all i will let you know and then we will go deep into one by one first one is preparation of soil after preparation of soil we need to do sowing of seeds after that manuring and adding fertilizers in between we need to do irrigation after irrigation and in between the process we need to do weeding when our crop is ready we need to do harvesting and after harvesting we need to do storage 
so these are the set of activities we need to perform to get a crop so one by one we will go through them so first of all we will see preparation of soil okay so preparation of soil first of all what is soil as we all know it is the uppermost layer on the crust it is uppermost layer on the crust of the earth in soil our crop grows so very important we must have a good well prepared soil so if i say preparation of soil so it includes three processes first one is leveling plowing and tilling see my dear students what we need to do in the preparation of the soil is that see soil is very important the more good is the soil more it will be giving a better plant to grow a good scenario it will give so very important what is plowing leveling and tilling so first of all for that we need to see plowing see my dear students if this is a soil and we continuously this is our field if we continuously grow crops in it what will happen is that the nutrients in it nutrients in will get depleted and it will be having very very few nutrients so what is being done in plowing is that an agriculture instrument is used okay and by plowing this lower layer of the soil is put upward and this upper layer of soil is put downward why as we all know already many crops has been grown so this upper layer is not having any nutrients so this soil nutrient less soil is put downward and the soil which was at this place is put upward okay this downward soil was having more nutrients so it will come upward it means now we are having a more nutrient soil upward and the less nutrient soil has gone downward so now it will get time to get replenished okay and second thing why we do plowing what is plowing plowing means loosening of soil plowing means loosening of soil to loosen it up so when we do this loosening of soil or plowing of soil what happens is that as soil gets loosened up many air spaces are being created air spaces as air goes into it okay as the air goes into it it makes the soil more nutrient rich it makes the soil more nutrient rich okay moreover see when plowing is done there were few of the plants which were already grown in the field there were few plants which were already present in the field these plants were not of my use so what happens in plowing is that these unwanted plants gets uprooted uprooted means their root comes upward and their upper root part goes downward so as the now the root is in the air it will not get any water and this plant will die as this plant will die now it will become an organic waste and it will get decomposed and mixing into my soil and my soil will get more nutrient see my dear students plowing means loosening of soil why i need to loosen up my soil there are many reasons first of all i need to loosen because in the next step i will be putting seed into my soil if this soil will be hard my seed will not be able to penetrate its root so more is the soil is the loose more is the soil is the loose that much easily my seed will germinate and after germination 
very easily these roots will go into the soil why because it is very loosened up okay second thing this loosening of soil also help in replenishing the nutrients okay how first of all by uprooting the unwanted plants second thing when this unwanted plants dry up and die they become manure for my field very important dear students many places at many places manure is being added during the plowing itself don't worry we will see what is manure during plowing itself manure is being added for a good mixing up of soil and the manure what is leveling see dear students when loosening of soil is done now my soil is very much loose my soil is very much loose so what happens is that if wind blows if wind blows my soil will go away and as you know going away of soil or washing away of soil is known as soil erosion so my second motto is that my soil must not go away soil is a very precious natural resource if soil will go away then the hard surface will come and my seeds will not grow so this is called as leveling what is leveling in leveling behind the tractor during plowing a heavy wooden plank is there it drags and it pressure it gives a pressure a bit pressure it levels up the soil does not harden too much but only that much that it does not go along with the wind okay moreover leveling means if my field is not level it is having ups and downs so there will be great loss to me why if i water this field more water will be accumulated here and less water will be here due to less water here there will be no good crop and here as it will be water water will make this air present beneath it in the soil to go away and there as there will be no air my roots will not be able to breathe and hair also my crop will die up so having more water is also not good for crops and having less water is also not good for crops so for that it's far better that if i level up my field into a good plain then it will result to a go more and more good crop so this was preparation of soil in preparation of soil we do leveling plowing and tilling and in this we need to look after the uppermost layer of the crust that is soil after leveling the soil the second thing is sowing what is sowing now we will see sowing is the process of putting seeds on or into the soil okay what is sowing sowing is the practice of throwing or putting see let's see what is sowing sowing is scattering of seeds scattering of seeds in the field or putting seeds into soil this process is known as sowing so very important first of all before sowing we must check out the quality of seed first of all we must not take poor quality seeds because a poor quality seed will give a poor or at least no crop seeds must be of good and healthy quality very important you can very easily do an activity to check whether a seed is healthy or not just put the seeds in water seeds those sink and settle down are of good quality and the seeds which are floating are of poor quality these seeds which are floating are of poor quality the reason is that the reason is that these seeds these seeds are eaten up by small small pest these pest create holes into it and as there is air into these holes these seeds don't 
sink or settle down in water and they easily float because of which we can judge that these are poor in quality. Moreover, we can also add seeds with fungi sides. My dear students, very important, you just need to understand. Fungi sides, weedy sides, insecticides, pesticides. What are these? These all are chemicals to kill. What? Very important. These all are chemicals to kill. Very important. What to kill? Fungicides kill fungus. Weedicides kill weeds. Insecticides kill insect. And pesticides kill pest. Okay. So the front name, as you can see, okay. This prefix name. Suffix is sites, prefix is fungi, weed, insect, pest. So by name itself you can get to know that what these chemicals are being used to kill what, okay? So by spraying a bit fungicides on seed ensures that there is no growth of any fungus left on the seeds. Now see my dear students, while you do sowing, you need to keep many things in my mind, in your mind. What is that? Very important. See, if this is my field, I must show my seeds first of all uniformly so that there is no issue while harvesting it second thing there must be enough space between the seeds because if many seeds I will sow at the same place then many plants will grow there and because of that they will not be able to get proper water and all the things proper sunlight they will not get second thing is that if this is my ground, if this is my ground, I must sow my seed at a good depth. Why? If they will not be in good depth, then birds will eat up this. If it will be at very much depth, then its shoot will take a lot of time to come out from the ground. And because of it may be that it does not grow properly. A proper depth must be there and there must be enough space while sowing my soil must be a bit moist means it must be a bit wet why so that my seed gets moisture and it starts germinating but it must not have a lot of water it must not have a lot of water why because if it will have a lot of water the soil in it will not be having any air because of which my seed will not be able to breathe and will not be able to germinate. This is called as water logging. See my dear friends, while preparation of soil that is plowing, we use few instruments. Most common instrument which was used in India was as of now it is also being used. That is a plow. That is a plow. This is an agriculture agricultural implements what are agricultural implements these are the instruments see agriculture cannot be done with the help of few instruments see as i myself do the teaching as of now what instruments i am using i am using marker board mobile stand so for agriculture also you need many of the instruments this is a plow this is a plow share this is of iron, it goes into the soil. What it do is that it will throw this layer of soil here and this soil will come here. Means upper part of soil, upper part of soil will come to the lower part and lower part of the soil will come to the upper part. Okay. This is shaft and this is beam. This beam is put on the bullocks, a pair of plugs. 
and they pull it. Very important. Even ho is also present. What is ho? This is a shaft and a blade like this of iron is put into soil and it do the blowing. It do blowing to very less area. Okay, in just a single line and it do blowing in the large area. This is ho. Nowadays. Cultivator is being used by tractor. What is a cultivator? In cultivator, there are many small plow like shafts. Okay. In this shares, and this cultivator is being pulled by tractor. So with the same tractor, once in a time, we can plow a large area. So even for sowing, even for sowing, we require instruments. Even for sowing, we require instruments. So sowing can be done by two methods. Sowing can be done by two methods. If you are having a small field, if you are having a small field, so you can do sowing by hands. First one is by manual methods. That is by hand. You can one by one take the seed and put it into soil, or you can just manually throw it into soil. Or you can use seed drill. If you are having a large field. This method is not possible. It will take a lot of time. Seed drill. When a cultivator is there, a funnel is taken from a pipe. Pipes are connected to these shares of the cultivator, and seeds are put into it. When seeds are put into it, what happens is that seeds go into this pipe along with plowing. These seeds go into the Soil at a particular depth. Okay, during the plowing, this seed comes here. Along with this, the upper soil comes here, and this soil goes here. So now the seed is covered with soil. So very important by seed drill, you can manage a good space, and you can manage a good depth. So this is a very good way of sowing the seed with the help of seed drill. Okay, my dear students. After you have done the sowing process, in many plants you will observe that seeds are not being sown. Transplantation is being done. What is transplantation? Transplantation. Trans means to bring from somewhere else. Plantation means to put the plant. Very important. Plant such as paddy. Rice. Rice is never directly sown into field. First of all, it is sown into a nursery. In nursery, these plants grow. From these plants, only healthy plants are chosen. Healthy plants are being taken and then shifted to large fields. Okay. So when they are shifted to large fields, they are properly sown. What are benefits of transplantation? The best benefit of transplantation is that from nursery, I will take only those seedlings. These small small plants are called as seedlings. Okay. I will only choose the healthy plants. I will only choose the healthy plants. And healthy plants I will not take. These healthy plants when I plant into field, they will give me a healthy crop. So this is the very much good benefit of transplantation. Okay. After I have grown the plant, it doesn't mean that my work is done. All the plants, all the organism require food and nutrients. So similarly, similarly, these plants after growing also require nutrients. Very important. Nutrients I am just writing by N and these are the plants. These will continuously consume nutrients. So I need to continuously give nutrients to the soil. Okay. The process of adding nutrients, very important. Process of adding nutrients into the soil 
into the soil is called manuring manuring is a process to add nutrients you can do manuring process by adding manure or by adding fertilizers adding nutrients i need to continuously add nutrients why because these plants continuously need nutrients to grow more will be the nutrients more there will be growth so very important now we will see adding of nutrients how to add nutrients to the soil there are two methods first one is by adding manure and second one is by adding fertilizer manure is our basic cow dung plant waste that we add into the soil and fertilizer are the chemicals which you buy from the factories and then put it into soil so there is a great great difference between fertilizer and manure first we will see what is a manure and then we will see what is a fertilizer along with that we will also compare both of these manure fertilizers very important manures we get from plants and animals fertilizers we get from chemicals these are plant and animal waste for example is cow dung these are fully chemicals manure as we get from plant and animals it means it is organic that is it is natural it is inorganic if i am having buffaloes if i am having cows i can very easily prepare it at my farm prepare at farm i can prepare it by farm house okay moreover if by field if i keep on accumulating the waste leaves and all then also can i can very easily prepare my new fertilizers only prepared in factories prepared in factories this is fully natural this is fully artificial no rule of nature in this now the question arises what is the main use see very important a farmer needs a balanced use of this we need to use both of these i am telling you very important we need to use both of these but using fertilizers we must be using it very smartly why right? using it in a wrong way we fully spoil my field using it any way will not will surely be helpful for my field many times i also need these but using it in useless way will surely create a useless sense or it will fully destroy my field see how this is about the origin now very important manure we require in huge volumes two tractors three tractors four tractors truly fully we require these in less volumes one bag two bag three bags like this very important manure almost give all nutrients these gives only particular nutrients particular nutrients you will get very important my dear students in our field there are two types of nutrients first one are primary nutrients and second nutrients are nitrogen potassium and phosphorus which are respectively known as npk nutrients very important dear students these are very very important nutrients in my soil if there is any lack of these nutrients for sure my crop will be not good so see what happens is that for sure manure is giving me all the nutrients it is giving only particular nutrient but the nutrient which it gives is npk 
की मींस इफ आई हैड दीस वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट न्यूट्रिएंट्स आई एम गेटिंग ठीक है इफ आई एम गेटिंग ऑल न्यूट्रिएंट्स बट वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट द कंसंट्रेशन इज वेरी लेस कंसंट्रेशन इज वेरी लेस if i am adding fertilizers it gives me in large concentration very important second thing if i put manure it will take a week 10 days more than 10 days many times the moisture is not present to get that thing to mix into soil and second thing after mixing it will also take a lot of time that plant can absorb it but this fertilizer within 2 to 3 days very easily mixes and very easily absorbs in water and very easily goes into the plant body so see first of all takes time in mixing in soil mixes very easily mixes very easily second thing takes time to solve in water definitely takes time to dissolve in water and this one dissolves very easily question arises here nutrients plants are getting from water so add as this is taking less time so it will not be absorbed by plants very easily and it will be absorbed by plants very easily showing a great great growth so very important plants grow slowly why because there are nutrients in the soil but they are not that much absorbing or dissolving water and these plants grow very fast plants grow very fast why these fertilizers mix up in water very easily and when this water is being absorbed by plant they get all the nutrients and as they got nutrients they now very easily grow now the question arises i am only having benefits of this no this is very cheap manure is very cheap this is very costly very costly it costs a lot second thing this does not destroy humus this when added more destroys humus we all know what is humus very important for growth of organisms human is the humus is the decomposed stuff added in the soil okay moreover humus also includes the microorganism and the insects these fertilizers kill the microorganism and insects present in the soil if added a lot which will surely destroy my replenishing ability of the soil means if i add more fertilizers my soil will get degraded it will fully get degraded and more even if added more my soil will either be the messy or basic but if i add this more my more humus will be generated it means it is very much good for the soil and my soil now can replenish more second thing it does not destroy the nature of my soil it neither makes it acidic or basic now the question arises these fertilizers do a lot of pollution they do soil pollution and if water from the field goes into the rivers and ponds then this take this water takes chemicals along with it doing water pollution but this manure does not do any pollution so very important my dear students this is the manure and fertilizer we need to do for adding the minerals but we need to be smart we need to use a balanced balanced way we need to use both of them in a balanced way to get a better product and to maintain the fertility of my soil 
Now very important, one more method is there to maintain the nutrients in my soil. And this is known as crop rotation. This process is known as crop rotation. Okay. Now let's see what is crop rotation. Crop rotation is means changing the crops. Changing the crops. Continuously to change the crop one after another, not growing the same crop again and again. See, if there are any nutrients A, B, C, D, E. For example, if I am growing any crop C, again and again, again and again, and it consumes the nutrient C. There are many C nutrients, there are many A nutrients, but it will again and again use C my soil will not get the time to get back the nutrient and next time when I will grow this C crop there will be no C nutrient and my crop will not grow for example if I grow a crop A this takes a lot of A nutrient for example this has consumed the nutrient this time next time if I grow the crop D it will consume the nutrient D after that if I grow the crop E it will consume the nutrient E but till that time my soil will get automatically replenished with A and C nutrient and again after one or two years I can grow A or C crop very easily so means I am growing crops also moreover I am not letting the nutrient the fixed nutrient go down its level I will not let go down second thing in between I will grow legumes or leguminous crops what happen if I grow any leguminous crops they will convert the atmospheric nitrogen into the nitrates and will add nutrients to my soil see in between growing legumes that is growing peas and all such type of dal and all okay these crops will add nutrients to my soil and hence I have no need to take any urea and all urea is a fertilizer which adds nitrates to the soil so instead of throwing urea into the soil or adding urea into the soil you can just grow the legumes you will be getting a crop along with that free of cost your soil will get replenished ok these friends after this we must know that for any plant for any plant to get these nutrients or for any organism to survive for any organism to survive they need water if plants are there they need a regular supply of water for they need constantly the water see my dear students if water is there in the soil continuously it evaporates moreover it also percolates goes down to the earth into the ground so very important my top layer soil is not having constant water all the times I constantly need to add water to my this soil so that my plants grow very well and this process is known as irrigation this process is known as irrigation what is irrigation very simple irrigation is supplying water to the crops regularly whenever required whenever my crops require water and if I am giving them water it means I am doing the process of irrigation see my dear students the most important question now arises is that why I need to do irrigation why I need to irrigate my field ok the reason is that irrigation see first of all all the living organisms require water to survive 
this one is the first reason second thing if my crop is there and here are the nutrients these nutrients will be absorbed by the plants only and only if water is present in the soil these nutrients are mixed into water and the water when absorbed by the roots of the plant these nutrients also go into the plant so very important second one is for the absorption of nutrients okay nutrients will never be consumed never never be consumed until and unless water is not present see my dear students there if i am providing water when the plants are grown more plant more water i will give to the plants more will be the growth most important the field must be irrigated even during the sowing because for germination water is required so irrigation is also must be during the germination fifth when field is irrigated when field is irrigated it maintains the temperature how our plants continuously do transpiration because of which they are safe from the hot currents of the air moreover due to irrigation our crops are also free from the frost okay so these are the few basic reasons now very important thing is there my dear students if my plant will not be having enough water it will for surely affect the process of photosynthesis even for photosynthesis good supply of food in the plants there must be a good supply of water to the plants very important this is the seventh point these are all are the reasons for which i need to irrigate my soil now very important as you can see in paddy there is a lot of requirement of water continuously there must be a lot of water present in that it must be smashy and a bit muddy okay so if there is irrigation it fully depends on first one is what type of crop is there second what type of soil is there third one is what type of season it is different different crops require different different level of irrigation in paddy a lot of or you can say 24 hour irrigation water needs to be present in the soil or you need to give water to the soil whereas in case of wheat you only need to irrigate field only three times okay soil very important different different soils show different different behavior to the water so let's take an example of sandy soil and clay soil as we all know sandy soil particles are huge so if you irrigate the field they very easily percolate and go into the soil so sandy soil requires more irrigation why even if you irrigate the field that water will go down and there will be no water to continuously be made the present water in the soil you need to irrigate regularly in the sandy soil it means in rajasthan if you are present you need to irrigate more why it is having sandy soil in clay soil the particles are very small if you irrigate once then water will be present into the soil it will not percolate so in clay soil you need to irrigate less season very important if there is rainy season so continuously by god irrigation will be done by the rain itself you no need to irrigate anything else but in, if it is summer season you need to regularly irrigate your field why because if you will not be irrigating your field regularly your crop might die because of the hot currents of the air moreover due to the harsh sunlight the leaves may dry up on the chlorophyll or the cells of the leaves may die ok my dear students now what are the sources of irrigation see my dear students if i say sources of irrigation 
for example if there is water anywhere i don't know where is the water and this is my fields having my crops in simple language if i say what is irrigation to manage water from anywhere to my crops and this process is normally known as irrigation from what sort of place at the what sort of place i am getting the water is called as the source of irrigation or the source of water there are many sources of water by god's grace in monsoon we are getting by rain it may be any dam it may be any river it may be any pond it may be any lake it may be underground water so by these sources in the case of rain i know it is anything if i put a pipe nowadays there are many methods of irrigation methods of irrigation we use pump we put one pipe with any of these sources in underground we are having tube well one pipe is deep into the ground and another pipe is into the field pump takes the underground water then this is called as tube well we can put our pump into dam or we can put our pump into canal from there the pump can suck the water and flow into the fields so nowadays pump is a very common method of irrigation tube wells are there my dear students in ancient time there were traditional method even still these methods are used but not that much what are the traditional methods of irrigation that is moat daily these few are the few are the these are the few of the traditional methods of uh, this irrigation chain pump see i will just give an example of moat what is in moat if there is a well and there it is water there a pulley is tied and a camel or any buffalo is tied here and a huge leather bag is put here then this camel pulls this and this huge leather bag come here and this water is being thrown into this field and the water goes here goes here this is very time consuming things very important in these traditional method it consumes a lot of time it consumes a lot of labor moreover the water thrown into the field is also not uniform nowadays in modern modern methods of irrigation there are two methods one is sprinkler method and another one is drip irrigation these are the modern methods being used for irrigation what is being done in these methods is that see sprinkler you might have even seen in the garden of our school sprinkler method if this is a field a sprinkler having a nozzle here throws water everywhere so the water falls like rain very important these both these methods uses less water very important sprinkler system is used if any land is uneven if i directly throw water more water will get accumulated here and less water will be here but if i am using sprinkler system then fixed water will fall here and fixed water will fall here fixed water will fall here and there will be no uniformity there will be no uniformity so sprinkler system is used in rajasthan especially in gujarat also in our rural district is also nowadays being used a lot drip system small small pipes are spread into the field in a regular fixed form and these are having holes in them and drop by drop water directly falls to the root of the plant basically these are being used in orchards or where vegetables or fruits are being grown drop by drop water falls into the soil and very less water is wasted and more efficient is the or that drop directly goes to the root of the soil so the root of the plant and that water is very efficiently used by the plant see my dear students after irrigation 
Irrigation is a regular process. It doesn't mean once done, again and again it needs to be done. See my dear students. While this process, we also need to look the process of weeding. What is weeding? If this is my field, I am continuously giving nutrients to my field. I am continuously giving water to my field and my field is also getting sunlight so obviously my crop will grow these are the basic requirements for the growing of any plant any plant means even in my field many such plants will also grow which I does not want these plants are known as weeds what are weeds? weeds are the unwanted plants growing in the field now what is weeding weeding is the process of removing the weeds what is weeding weeding is the process of removing weeds how can i remove these weeds i can personally go take out and throw them many times weeds are being burned why if these will be eaten by any animals they will come back to our field they will do the dung okay and again that seed will come into my field these unwanted weeds are either filled manually by hands or a chemical is spread spread into the on my crops and complete field that chemical is weedy sites weedy sites spread on my field weedy sites only and only kills the weed and does not destroy my crop so my crop is still standing it is not affected it only and only kills the weed so what are the weedy sites? weedy sites are the chemicals which kill the weeds but does not affect the crop so weeds moreover the important question is that what goes in this plant is there what effect it do to my crop see if any plant is there for sure weeds will also consume my nutrients second thing newts will also absorb water from my soil weeds will also weeds will also take space consume space in field weeds will also complete for sunlight in the field so these are the very important things which even my crop requires and even if these things are being consumed by weeds then for sure my crop will also be affected so if I want my crop to get more and more nutrients, water, space and sunlight I have to kill the nutrients so they are not able to consume these things and these are being taken up by the crop plants ok my dear students now very very important thing is that each and everything has been done very properly now my crop is ready now my crop is ready and it has got matured if I want to say it has got matured it means now it will be not growing any more than this it will not be growing any more than this and now comes the harvesting see this is my field my crop is now fully grown my crop is now fully grown it is now matured so when my crop is fully grown and matured now I need to cut this crop and collect it this process is known as harvesting what is harvesting? harvesting is the process of cutting and collecting the crop when it is fully grown or matured very important harvesting can be done by sickle by hand or you can use many machines for harvesting for harvesting what it is done I will cut it from the lower part and take my upper part if I am doing harvesting I also need to do threshing see my dear student what is threshing this is my plant this and for example here it is my wheat my wheat this wheat seed I want this wheat seed 
and it is covered with something. Threshing is a process. I want to separate anyhow this seed from this left power thing. I only want the seed. So I will thresh them, hit them. So what will happen? Seeds will come out. This covering you can see on the seed. This is known as chef. Okay. The chef and seed will separate. This is my desired thing for which I was working so hard. So many practices I have done. This process is threshing. What is threshing? Threshing is the process to separate seed from the chef. The process of separating seed and chef. While I do threshing, I also get these plant parts in small, small plant parts, the chef and plant other parts stand in small, small pieces and this is used as fodder. Very important. This thing is used as fodder. See my dear students, fodder is a very, very important thing. Many places, this hay is being burned. This left part is called hay and hay is used as fodder. Many places, when we cut this, small, small parts of plants are still at the ground. Along with these parts and hay that is fodder, many people use it for fodder, many people burn it. That burning is a very, very great environmental pollution creating resource. It creates a lot of smoke. In Haryana, Punjab, these things are burned in so much level that the visibility decreases in Delhi, not only in Haryana, Punjab. Many, many large farmers, farmers which are in large, large fields, they burn this. You and me now need to work on the thing how to use this hair and shaft. Okay, this is a very important thing. Nowadays, many factories are using this hair and shaft to make paper. Well, this is very useful thing. Why to burn that thing and create a pollution if we can use it somewhere else? So that is harvesting. Harvesting is the process of cutting and collecting the crop when it is fully grown and matured. We need to do threshing after harvesting. We use machines such as thresher. Thresher for threshing. Very important. Many times these seeds are again done the process of winnowing. What is winnowing? Winnowing is a process in which this product is now made to fall from a height. So what is winnowing? Winnowing is the process of more separating the seed and this leftover chef and hay. It cleans the seeds more. It gives me more seeds and it separates from the chef and the fodder. So what is winnowing? Winnowing is the process to separate we are done winnowing in the sixth standard to separate seed and hay and chef chef is already separated by threshing but there is small small hay chef parts are present in it so what is done in winnowing is that for example if these are my seeds and in between there is a bit of unwanted hay present so seeds fall head set as they are heavy and along with wind this is called as winnowing because we use wind for separation as this hay and shape is lighter along with wind they go ahead and fall a bit away and both the seeds and this unwanted thing is separated harvesting doesn't mean that my all the things has been completed yes my dear friends very important Harvesting doesn't mean that my each and everything is done. First of all, if the harvest is not good, for sure it is a very bad moment for a farmer. But our Indian farmers, all the Indian farmers are very hard working. They work very hard and by God's grace, God give them, give them a very good harvest. Even when there is harvest good or bad, our all Indians enjoy festivals during harvesting. There are many harvesting festivals such as Holi, Lodi, Baisakhi. My dear students, most of our Indian festivals 
many of our indian festivals are depending on the harvest season during harvest season we are having baisakhi lodi holi bihu pongal these all are the moment for joy for a farmer why when we see a good harvest in the field when we see wheat field you will find it is like gold when we see a golden wheat mature crop in the field it surely feels a lot of joy to the farmer and that is a festive season and we all know india is having many festivals the reason is that there are two festive seasons one when we harvest the kharif and one we harvest the rabi see my dear students after i have harvested my crop it doesn't mean i am free now i need to look upon the storage of this stuff see my dear students in the field when i get my crop very important i will keep that crop for 2 to 3 days in the open sunlight or in the field itself why when the sunlight will fall in it the moisture present in this crop i have got the harvested stuff now. it's not the crop now i have got the harvested material or you can see for example seeds wheat i have got for example wheat i have got now i have to sun dry them why these seeds are having a lot of moisture when sunlight will fall on them this moisture will get decreased why moisture as we have already done moisture helps microorganisms to grow moisture helps decaying and decomposition i don't want my this organism this is a natural material and all the natural things get decayed or decomposed but i don't want that thing to happen so i will let this sunlight fall on this because of its moisture in this will get decrease and now my crop product is more safe after that i store them in jute bags i store them in jute bags also called as gunny bags many times this is harvest directly taken to our homes and kept openly in our rooms until and unless the farmer sell it if farmer sell it these gunny bags go to great great go downs great great go downs and these grains are also stored in many huge cylinders in which grains in stored in lakhs of tons lakhs of tons of grains in stored if my grains are stored not only at this place even at my home these are being attacked by pests many insects try to attack and destroy them so that time i need to spray pesticides i need to spray pesticides moreover when there are large large go downs i need to even put red killer ya fir red poison so the red destroys my crop product so those reds can be killed okay my dear students many times if i have done vegetables or fruits that material is being stored in cold storage cold storage what is cold storage cold storage are go downs but the temperature is very low because of which our vegetables and fruits are safe but in grains i don't need to manage any temperature they are directly stored in go downs fci food corporation of india is a government department which basically do the do the work of storing of grains but many private companies and many private players are also there which buy the product from the farmers see my dear students this was the whole process for getting a good crop now very important thing is that it doesn't mean that we are getting the food from only and only plant we also get food from animals so animal husbandry what is animal husbandry it is a branch of agriculture only in this branch or in this animal husbandry we need to give food give 
shelter take care of animal rear it do breeding in animal husbandry we need to give to food to any animal give it shelter take care of that animal rear it do breeding and then utilize it products for my food very important many important animal food is meat egg milk honey etc we can't assume our life without milk and meat products okay so in animal husbandry we are also getting food from animals the most prominent food is milk egg meat and honey very important for that we need to do animal husbandry you might have seen many uh, cattle being raised by many of your friends many tamilas are there in many of your friend circle that is only a part of animal husbandry nowadays many farmers are doing pc culture they are doing means they are they are taking care and giving shelter to the fish many are doing also taking care of honey and having honey combs and those honey boxes in their field and getting honey and this is a very important part of our food so our chapter is over